Gilding your Conqueror is an incredibly difficult challenge. Allow me to make it easy for you. Oh, these strategies will also get you platinum on all of them as well. Surely some of you have already completed certain Grandmaster Nightfalls this season, so I've taken the liberty of separating this guide into chapters so you can easily skip around to watch the sections that are relevant to your needs. There will be 12 chapters in total, two for each Grandmaster Nightfall. One of these two chapters will showcase the weapon and class loadout recommendations for the Grandmaster, while the second will showcase how to trample strictly the difficult sections of each GM. I won't waste your time showing you things like how to beat this part of the Corrupted. Before we get started, I do want to note that my loadout recommendations are simply recommendations. If a different loadout or class composition fits your playstyle better, by all means, run it up. The best builds are the ones that you are comfortable using and the ones that post results. So with all that being said, let's get started. The Devil's Lair loadout consists of all three players running Arbalist, an energy bow of their choice, and a linear fusion rifle such as Reed's Regret or Threaded Needle. I highly recommend linears with perks like Forpal Weapon or Firing Line as well. Titans want to run Bottom Tree Hammers with an exotic of their choice, Hunters want to run Bottom Tree Void with Omnioculus, and Warlocks want to run Well of Radiance with Phoenix Protocol. For mods, I recommend Particle Decon construction and defensive mods of your choice. For running the Devil's Lair itself, you can skip the first overload and still get platinum. For the train car hack section, simply hang out in the back area behind the trains. Enemies will not push you back here, making it incredibly safe. For the outdoor section, drop the barrier servitor, then the snipers on the roof and on the right, and the sniper on the roof to your left in the distance. Next, drop a well on top of the roof and one-shot the spider tank. Fall back to the back left structure from there and work your way around the map, killing the remaining adds in a clockwise circle, ending with the right brig. For the boss room, the left room is the safe zone. You can kill all four void servitors from the windows. If you need to damage the boss but can't see it, head to the basement. You can safely take one to two shots before having to dip out to lose your aggro. Make sure to kill the two overload captains that spawn with the second group of servitors to get platinum. For the Lake of Shadows loadout, we are having two of our guardians run a kinetic bow of their choice, an energy fusion rifle of their choice, and sleeper simulant. The third guardian is running a scout rifle of their choice, divinity, and a linear fusion rifle of their choice. For subclasses, titans want Thundercrash with Curious of the Falling Star, hunters want Bottom Tree Void with Omnioculus, and warlocks want Well of Radiance with Phoenix Protocol. If you don't have a warlock, titans will want to run Bubble instead. For mods, bring Particle Deconstruction and defensive mods of your choice. For the strategy of Lake of Shadows, in the bridge section, drop the Vandal Sniper followed by the Hobgoblin on the ledge. Then take the ledge that was occupied by that Hobgoblin and drop the next Hobgoblin, the Vandal Snipers, and the Ultra Knight with Sleeper Simulant. Finish off the Hob and the Phalanx in the left cubby before proceeding. In the next room, you can skip all of the adds, including the Overload, and still get Platinum if you have a Hunter. Invis your team and work your way around the Knight and then up to the bridge. Head left into the stairwell once reaching the top to kill the Solar Knight. After that, you can easily skip the Goblins in the next room and burn the Wizard to proceed. For the boss, have a Well and Divinity player sit on the back middle of the map while the third breaks the Blight. Plant the Well on spawn and Divinity the boss the entire time, making sure the Sleeper Simulants hit the blue bubble of the Divinity. Loadouts for Exodus Crash consists of all three players running Arbalist, a bow of their choice, and a sword of their choice. I highly recommend falling guillotine with Relentless Strikes Whirlwind Blade for the sword. Titans want to run Bottom Tree Hammers with an exotic of their choice, Hunters want to run Bottom Tree Void with Omnioculus, and Warlocks want to run Well of Radiance with Phoenix Protocol. For mods, Passive Guard is a must here, and I highly recommend Arc Resist as well if you can slot it. In the Exodus Crash, for the Hack Room, utilize Wells to hold your ground and prioritize Overload Stones and Exploding Shanks. Once you reach 55%, back off to kill the Barrier Servitors. Take your time to regain your footing, and don't be scared to retreat if you get overrun. For the tank, you can climb the structure in the back on the right to get an easy angle on it. For the inner ship, you can climb the structure in the back to scale to the top without spawning additional adds. For the boss, cycle supers in the back of the map and pick up orbs to always have ad clearing power and protection available. Your number one priority is killing explosive shanks, while number two is sorting the boss when he gets close thanks to passive guard. Stun any barrier servitors that walk up to knock down their immunity shields to send the boss away. You can also hold off on going to future phases by damaging the boss to send it away, but leaving a few adds up, allowing your supers to recharge before entering future phases. For the Proving Grounds loadout, you will want all three guardians rocking Arbalist, an energy pulse rifle, and a linear fusion rifle such as Reed's Regret or Threaded Needle. 
Titans want bottom tree hammers with an exotic of their choice, Hunters want bottom tree void with Omnioculus, and Warlocks want Well of Radiance with Phoenix Protocol. For mods, I highly recommend Particle Deconstruction and whatever defensive mods you so choose. As far as strategy goes, you can skip the first Incendiar and still get Platinum by scaling the rock side to the left. The outdoor boss can be bugged out by having a Guardian stand next to him. He can't stomp, shoot, or fire missiles while someone is hugging him. For the tank room, kill the first two interceptors before dropping down by shooting the body of the vehicles until they explode. Drop down and kill the snipers on the left and right, then utilize the arbalist to kill the two majors and barrier champions. Kill all enemies except for the interceptor in the back. Kill the back interceptor by either sniping the pilot or blowing up the body of the interceptor, then immediately head underground in the middle. Have two players focus left and one focus right, taking out the snipers up top first, then killing the barrier colossus on each side, then the remaining trash adds. Let supers recharge and kill the right side tank, then repeat the process minus the snipers. For boss room, head to the back of the map and have your best player on one side with your other two tag teaming the other. You can safely chill in the oven by standing in the side cubby in the middle. Utilize peeking through cover to damage the boss while he can't hit you. You can also use cover to intercept the fireballs as well. At 2 thirds HP, kill the unstoppable incendiors. If you are the player on the solo side, you will need two stuns. I recommend a hunter for this side for that reason. Let the boss shoot all the fireballs before trying to destroy the shield generator. He does 13 waves. Kill the shield generator by having your teammates pull aggro or by baiting the boss stun. It takes five arbalist shots. Clean up the window adds, then damage the boss to one third HP, running to the entrance after his shield comes up. Kill the two unstoppables while strafing and head glitching, then wait out the boss's 13 waves of fireballs. Head up to the shield generator, baiting aggro as necessary, and then back up to the entrance after destroying. Kill as many adds as you can, then run uphill to the back furnace when the boss pushes up before he shoots fireballs. Invis Hunter is great here. After that, kite the boss, utilizing the oven pass through to get away from him if he pushes up. For the hollowed layer loadout, we want one guardian running a kinetic sniper rifle such as Succession, an energy bow of their choice, and Sleeper Simulant, while the other two will run kinetic bows of their choice, Telestos, and linear fusion rifles of their choice. Titans want bottom tree hammers with Aeons, Hunters want bottom tree void with Omnioculus, and Warlocks want bottom tree downblade with Aeons. For mods, I recommend Particle and whatever defensive mods you desire. For the Ultra Room, head straight into the right side cubby for a good angle. Be careful of the three snipers in this room as well. For the next room, kill the two snipers before entering. For Tank Room, compress the plate almost all the way down, but get off just before it completes to spawn the adds, but not the tank. Kill all the adds, then finish the plate to spawn the tank. Deal as much damage to the tank's legs as you can before breaking one, then burn its middle crit when it falls before it gets back up to avoid an extra wave of adds. For the plate room, do one plate at a time and immediately retreat to the back of the room once adds spawn. Continue the plate after killing all adds. Take your time on the vegetable hand or burn him with heavy if you have Aeons. For the bridge, be careful of the two sniper stalkers in the back left and the back right. For the boss, stay out of his sight as he one-shots. He can't shoot at you while doing the circle attack, though. The adds, tether, and intermission phases are based on his HP, so damage him slowly and never damage him while adds are alive. Additionally, anytime he tethers you, backpedal by either holding S key or back on your thumbstick the entire duration of the tether. This will have you go towards him significantly more slowly. The first wave of adds is on the right side. Wave 2 is on left with a sniper add. The next checkpoint is intermission, with two waves of adds and an overload on the second wave. Utilize supers to clear the adds here. Play up as best as you can to funnel everything through mid, but still keep an eye on your flanks. Keep an eye on the ground for baby screebs, and an eye in the sky for purple grenades. Next checkpoint is a tether, followed by a wave of adds on left. After that is another tether, followed by a wave of adds on right with a sniper add. Next checkpoint is intermission with three waves and an unstoppable on the third. Same deal here as before, play up, watch for grenades, one super per wave, watch your flanks. Using Telesto to make a minefield of sorts works great here. Next up is a wave of right adds, tether, wave of left adds with a solar chieftain, tether, and then kill. The corrupted loadout consists of two guardians running blinding grenade launchers, the Laminarch exotic bow, and linear fusion rifles of their choice, with the third guardian running a kinetic pulse rifle, Tiku's divination, and a linear fusion rifle of their choice. Here, Titans want to rock Bubble, Hunters want to rock Bottom Tree Void with Omnioculus, and Warlocks want to run Well of Radiance with either Aeons or Lunafaction Boots. 
For mods, Particle is a must-have here. For the intro, kill the Scorn Overload, then head to the back right and kill the Centurion to proceed. You can skip the Taken Overloads and still get Platinum. For the elevator, precharge two balls, then begin the encounter, stacking up at the back right. Use your first super on the Scions, then throw the balls at the shielded enemies on the second wave. Get the Centurion weak, but don't kill it. Precharge two more balls, then kill the Centurion. After killing the Centurion, stack up on the left side and use your other two supers here, throwing the balls on the second wave to kill the enemy shields and using blinding GLs to blind the phalanxes. For the outdoor section, if you have an Invis Hunter, you can kill the Unstops, then kill the first Shrieker. Have one of your blinding GL players continuously blind the second Shrieker while your Hunter moves up to the next section while blinding the third. This will despawn all enemies. For the Ogre section, kill the enemies in the following order to easily get Platinum. First, the Hive Unstoppable Ogre, followed by the High Boss. Next, kill the two Taken Unstoppables, then the Taken Boss. The Taken Unstoppables will eventually make their way to you from the right balcony if you post up on right side, so be patient. After killing everything, head up to the top right, then book it down the stairs into the portal, turning 90 degrees to your left as you enter. For the drop, do it exactly like this. For the boss, jump onto the main platform for about 10 seconds, then jump back to the previous platform to kill ads safely and avoid joining allies. Kill everything, then grab a ball and head to the back of the middle platform. Drop a well, then throw the charged ball and have each player hit three linear headshots on her, immediately reloading on the third shot or as she teleports away while turning 180 degrees. Continue shooting, and if you hit your shots, you will kill her. But if you don't, it's okay. Book it back to the safe platform at the beginning and kill all ads, then break her shield to send her to the Ascendant Realm. Do not go on the beginning ad platform after this point, as it will be a turn back zone and kill you. Have one player remain back and grab an extra ball to bring into the Ascendant Realm after Sidia disappears. Carry the ball up to the first main platform and kill the Sniper, Knight, and Overload on the main platform. Next, throw the ball at Sadia and kill her to finish the strike. It is important to not kill the knight that shares the platform with Sadia, as doing so will send her to the next platform. Hopefully all went well and you are now a Gilded Conqueror. If you want to see live runs of Grandmaster Nightfalls, feel free to stop by my stream at twitch.tv slash magdix. And of course, please make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to my channel if this video helped in any way. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.